This episode of Two and a Half Geeks is brought to you by Data Robotics Drobo. You may be familiar with Drobo for the home user, but for small to medium-sized companies, check out drobo.com slash business for simple, sophisticated storage solutions for the enterprise. Coming up, we're talking about Intel's new 3D technology and their processors. AMD is still making processors. They're trying to do that. Asus has got a transformer and a whole lot more. The bar has been set wicked fast. It rocked in the benchmarks. We're going to up the ante uh, a little bit. Processing power, Maybe. I kind of understand this. Hello, welcome to Two and a Half Geeks. I'm Maya Zaktar, alongside Dave Altavilla and Marco Chepetta of Hot Hardware. How is everybody doing? Fantastic today. And how is Marco doing? I'm doing great now that the show started. That's right. <laughs> this Listen is Hot Hardware, uh, Two and a Half Geeks, and uh, sometimes... We as geeks also have hardware problems, and that is why everyone has a little bit of rage behind their smile today. No rage. All rage. Love. A little bit. I think a little bit. Hardware rage. Anyway, let's talk about some major news. Intel announced a new 22 nanometer 3D Trigate transistor, which sounds like it's just nonsense. But from what I've seen in videos, apparently they actually have working prototypes of their brand new technology. Dave, can you try to explain what exactly a 3D transistor is about, and why is this exciting? You ready for your head to hurt? Yes. <laughs> okay. So it is exciting in that it allows, um, as the, the title and the name suggests, um, a, a third dimension of uh, build, of, of construct, if you will, for the circuit to take place. So you have this... 2D planar build that exists today. You have a, a gate, a source, a drain. That's that's your basic transistor composition. And those um, elements exist in a 2D plane, um, you know, flat on a piece of silicon. Uh, and in that's in current technology. However, what, what Intel has done is developed a technology that allows the vertical plane to, to go up, right? Um, in a in three dimensions, so you have horizontal and and, and vertical, and and so you can go across the wafer and and grow up as well. So you take the silicon substrate, uh, which cuts across from source to drain, uh, across the gate in a in a transistor, which is a, a, a gate, uh, and and now the the material can go up as well and over to the drain and. So from source to drain, you have two dimensions, to, or another dimension, I should say, not two, but three, technically, to go from A to B, and you can go up and over now as well. And so what it allows for the net-net here is lower power consumption and faster uh, switching times. So beyond that, what does Intel <laughs> plan to do with this? I mean, sure, it's got a lot of power, and it's not going to use a lot of power. I mean, are they looking to get in the mobile space with this, or are we looking at crazy long battery life on laptops uh when are we actually seeing this happen i mean in, in in stores what do you got all the all the above to answer your question uh when we'll actually see a retail product um marco i, I don't think there were dates discussed about shipping men, uh skews do you do you have that i, I don't have that i don't right, think that so was disclosed they, did, they didn't give specific dates but right. all 22 nanometer next gen parts are going to use these uh, right. these 3D transistors. Correct. So yeah. So this, towards this the a, end of next year, second half of next year. Yeah. This is a this is a, a you know full production you know manufacturing vehicle that that Intel is going to be cutting over to exclusively. So you know if, I mean if if Intel eventually migrates completely to this technology. You know it's tried and true, and, and they've been you know engineering and developing it for a very long time. Uh, 22 nanometer is, is the, um, the, the manufacturing process, the, the die geometry that they're going to build it on. And so <clears throat> in addition to the economies of scale and, 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 and the smaller die geometry, the 22 nanometer technology from going down from 32, they, they're allowed, they can get you know twice the circuit area in the same die area that they had before in, in, in this new 20 new 22 nanometer technology. So add to that 3D technology as well. Okay, so 
you know, two x the efficiency on a wafer from a real estate standpoint. Add the three D technology to the mix as well. Now you get faster parts, lower power parts. And you're talking Intel's Intel stepping the game up yet again. The manufacturing machine that they are. That's how they compete. Make no mistake. They are a manufacturing machine, uh, as you know, as well as a tech, technological, you know, uh, company as well. They are a manufacturing horse, and so, yeah, there's going to be some exciting things in, in on, on the road ahead for Intel, and uh, the 3D technology is for real. And if they're betting the farm on it, you can be sure uh, they've got the kinks ironed out, and and this thing's pretty darn close to to prime time. If you guys are watching this and you're kind of confused exactly how a transistor works and this whole planar stuff in 3D, Intel's got a really good video trying to explain that. They shrink a guy down, at least that's what they're telling you, shrink a guy down to uh, a size of a transistor. He can see what's going on. Tries to make this into some kind of common sense. So if you're confused, <laughs> definitely check it out. But uh, I'm sure AMD is panicked. Uh, I, I know that they make processors and I know Marco wants to talk about the AMD Phenom 2X4980 Black Edition. Now, uh, this is the present, right? So yes. let's talk about something that's actually out. Let, let's talk about this. Marco, what, what's up with this processor? All right. So before we talk about this processor, I want to throw one more interesting tidbit about the previous topic. So um, Intel actually mentioned that the Trigate uh, transistors are much more power efficient at lower voltages, too. Then news kind of hit last week that there's rumors that Apple might be using Intel for manufacturing their future processors. So the writing is on the wall that some mobile parts are going to be really low power. Okay, yeah. that's out of the way. Let's go back to this the, the AMD uh, Phenom 2 X4 980 Black <laughs> Edition. Um, this is AMD's fastest quad-core processor to date. You're talking a default 3.7 gigahertz uh, core frequency on all four cores. Um, but it is using the, the the Deneb core that was released, you know, like I guess it's almost two years ago. It's the same core as the other Phenom 2 X4 900 series parts, just been clocked up a little bit higher. Now, where is this situated? I mean, it, it's a quad core. Now, they, I know AMD makes uh, six core stuff. Why bother even making this at all? So it, it is kind of hard to justify uh, th this processor, to be perfectly honest, but. You know, if you if you're let's say you're a gamer or the apps that you run most commonly are single threaded, maybe dual threaded tops, this is actually faster than their six core. So their fastest six core turbo is up to 3.7 gigahertz um, on half of its cores, on three of its cores. This is a standard clock 3.7 on all four cores. So if you're running lightly threaded workloads, um, it's going to be faster overall than even that six core chip. With that said, you know, it's kind of within a few bucks of much faster Intel processors. It's worth investing in a six core if you already have, you know, an AM2 or AM3 socket system and, and are looking for just a CPU upgrade. So it's really a small group of people that would should really consider this, this CPU. Yes, but does it run Android apps? I don't think so. I think we <laughs> will talk about a device that does that. The Asus ePad Transformer which is an Android tablet with an interesting laptop-style dock. Dave, you got to check this out, right? Yeah, here it is right here. And it's like a laptop-style laptop dock, netbook dock right there. See that? Well, nice, it's special. Right? You can see that? I can see that. Okay, good. The universe can so, see that. <laughs> so, you know, one of the things that, that Asus does really nice, you know, they pioneered the netbook, if you will, with, with the... Uh, the uh, E series of, of netbooks, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so, yeah, this is the EPad transformer, and you know, chiclet style keyboard. The the tablet actually. I'm going to try and pop this out on camera and not hurt myself or anybody else. So as you can see, you know, keyboard detaches, and now we're talking, you know, slate right here. So running Honeycomb, which is really nice, um, and you know set up so that it quickly connects to the keyboard and mouse and you know that that whole little docking station on the fly instantly you get a cursor and 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 mouse functionality and keyboard functionality and now you have an, a honeycomb powered netbook so really nice um you know take on the tablet as we know it today and uh the folks at asus have a winner on their hands we think because this thing really has shown well, not only in the benchmarks, but in terms of functionality and adding additional 
you know, capability to your average Slate PC. Now that tablet for the viewers and uh, the people listening to this, uh, wreaked havoc on your camera. The camera's trying to autofocus. Colors are going crazy. I'm sure that won't happen to everybody. Uh, let's really? Actually, let's talk a little bit about the actual tablet. Has Asus done anything to skin Android? Is this a stock honeycomb experience? And uh, does honeycomb seem baked for this particular product? Honeycomb is getting more baked. It's not fully baked, in my opinion. Um, Asus does a nice job of, of skinning uh, honeycomb a little bit, very lightly skinned, I might add, sort of like a bread coating, perhaps. Um, <laughs> Uh, and and we appreciate that because quite frankly you know um you don't, you don't need a lot of bloat on top of uh on top of android in my opinion and so they do a nice job you know one of the things i'm going to hold this up to the camera again one of the things you can see is there's a um uh, sort of like a, a battery level indicator which looks like water with ice cubes in it and that tells you how much battery life you, life you have left and you know so it's a quick okay i went in and out of focus there sorry about that um <laughs> So it's, it's a quick little gauge. So that's a nice little thing that you get on your desktop. Um, you get some other nice sort of, you know, just very delicate skins, uh, skinning sort of uh, features to honeycomb. But for all intents and purposes, it, it is a, a core, you know, base honeycomb setup. And the, the other thing that Asus seems to have done very nicely with this machine is to tweak performance. We actually found that it's somewhere in the neighborhood of 8 to 10% faster than uh, Motorola's Zoom tablet, which is based on the exact same hardware, uh, Tegra 2, a gig of RAM, uh, and some internal, you know, ROM. Um, and, and, but, you know, in the benchmarks that we ran it on, um, we found out that it was, again, about 8 to 10% faster. And we talked to the folks at Asus and asked why, and they worked pretty closely with, with Google to really tweak performance on this thing. That said, we're also hearing from folks we know that Android 3.1 is in the wings and really improves responsiveness and a lot of applications uh, in the in the stock Android experience. Well, let's let's forget about talking about these little toys, these little transformers. They just come apart. That's great. Let's talk about a gaming PC. Let's talk about the Digital Storm Enix gaming system. I saw it, it's an impressive looking uh, PC, an awesome black and red case. I actually saw this back when I was working at PC Mag. This case. <laughs> How's the actual insides of it, Marco? The actual insides are really cool. Our man uh, Joel took a look at the machine, and yeah, what's what's immediately striking as soon as you, you look at it is the form factor is completely different from most uh, boutique gaming PCs. It's not a big giant case. You know, it's not this you know big windows and crazy paint jobs. It's a, a Silverstone. Uh, I believe the model is FTO3 case. That's uh, houses <laughs> a micro ATX motherboard which is turned 90 degrees so you know the ports are shooting out of the out of the top of the machine it's got a funky fan setup it's got weird locations to mount drives and the end result is sort of this uh i, I mean this in the best way sort of this trash can looking case that's much <laughs> smaller but yet you know can still support some really high-end hardware the, the machine we looked at had an overclocked uh, sandy bridge cpu i believe it was at a uh, 4.2 gigahertz had dual gtx 580 graphics cards uh, SSD and hard drive. It was, you know, a really nice, well-balanced machine all around. The yeah, trashy PC. Trash can. I was thinking more like, what's a nice <laughs> trash can? R two D two. I mean, it's not round though. Uh, it's one of those. Like others. a simple human nice can, not a not a junky one. Yeah, really it's, nice. it's one of those <laughs> IKEA cans, trash cans. It, yeah. it, it is a really looking. It's a really nice looking machine. And, and you're right. It's quite understated. Is there anything else you want to tell the public about the this gaming rig? Sure. The other thing um, that's really nice about the Enix is that, you know, like other boutique gaming PCs, it is user configurable. You can outfit it any way that you want. But uh, the pricing is really competitive. So this is going to sound like a lot of money. It was 3300 for uh, the model that we tested. But you're talking close to, you know, hundreds to maybe thousand less than similarly <laughs> equipped machines from some other boutique builders. So if you choose the right combination of hardware and you like the form factor, the Enix is, is actually a pretty solid offering. And I hear rumblings of a giveaway at hot, 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 hot Hardware. I can't even say it. Hot Hardware. I'm so bothered by the giveaway that I can't even say the site's name. <laughs> You're in a tizzy, man. You're in a tizzy. Well, yeah. Hot Hardware gives away so many, like, just so many great things and, and like, just tons of money, it seems like. Thousands of dollars worth of equipment any given time. What's in the works now, Dave? We're going to be announcing a, 
definitely a, another killer gaming rig to give away to the masses. Uh, so stay tuned there. It's, it's going to be something big. It's going to be something beautiful, powerful. Um, but the good folks at AMD were nice enough to invite us and 25 of our closest friends to the AMD Fusion Developers Conference that's coming up in June. And uh, we have 25 tickets valued at $300 a piece that we can give out to the community at will. And you get to get full access to the show. Uh, you're going to get into all the keynotes, all the special sessions to learn about you know, AMD's Fusion technology, the, the combination of CPU and GPU and the, and the uh, um, merging of those two technologies to enable you know, better platforms, lower power platforms and uh, graphics uh, all integrated into one CPU, GPU thing that they call an APU now. And uh, so stick around. We're going to have details up on the site. You'll get to come hang with me and Marco. We're going to be out there at the conference, and uh, you get to join us free of charge. Uh, you're going to have to get there yourself. But um, for, for those of you that uh, aren't on the short list, uh, these are some, some pretty cool tickets to a pretty cool event that I um, would like to invite you to. So stay tuned. We're going to post that up and, and put out the invite to uh, all the good hot hardware readers out there. If you want to know the latest of what's going on so these contests, you can go to hothardware.com. You can also check the site out for everything we talked about today. Or you can go around the web. You can check out dig.com slash hothardware or twitter.com slash hothardware or facebook.com slash hothardware and youtube.com with lots of videos at youtube.com slash Hot Hardware Vids. Lots of reviews. You can see the e the EPC Transformer, whatever the heck it's called. <laughs> because I think yeah, it's got like got 40 it. different names to it. And uh, that pretty much wraps up this episode of Two and a Half Geeks. We will see everybody next week. Thanks for stopping by.